Pentagon leaders. They're going to testify tomorrow and Wednesday also on the botched Afghanistan withdrawal. Going to face some questions. What questions are you hoping they will answer? Well, look, I, I hope that they're going to be able to answer some very specific questions about Bagram. Why did you close Bagram? We know already through uh, individuals who have been talking uh, privately and a little bit publicly that they warned that closing Bagram on July 1st would be a disaster for the country. And we've heard the White House, Jake Sullivan and others, kind of dismiss that and say that they were told by military leaders to close Bagram and it would be fine. So we've got a rub here. Military leaders are saying, wait a minute, that's not what we briefed. And the political people inside the White House are saying, well, that's exactly what they briefed. And so we need senators and we need uh, people in Washington, D.C. to zero in on this. Who's right? Who's telling the truth and who's lying? Right. Uh, we've heard, of course, from the Biden administration, they tout the uh, nearly 125,000 uh, people in Afghanistan who they were able to evacuate. And yet, as we know, there are still Americans that remain behind enemy lines. Uh, do you think there will be questions about the decision to withdraw troops before everyone was brought home? Well, there better be. I mean, look, the Biden doctrine is 90 percent is good enough. And, and that's what we should be telling everybody. Imagine serving in the U.S. military or being a foreign service officer and, and hearing from your commander in chief that 90 percent, getting 90 percent of the Americans out is good enough. They were very proud of 90 percent. He said it publicly. Look, you and I can do math. That means 10 percent of the people were left behind. I think that the closing of Bagram is the key issue, and I would say that the second key issue is really zeroing in and, and asking, why did we remove 2,500 troops when we closed Bagram? 5,000 NATO troops, 2,500 U.S. troops, 5,000 NATO troops, before we evacuated the embassy with American Foreign Service officers and others inside the embassy. Why were why, the people inside the embassy just completely abandoned. Right. I, I think we've never had a secretary of state abandon Americans overseas. You know, foreign service officers don't carry guns. They're diplomats. The guns and the people protecting you in these rough places are the military. When you evacuate the military, the State Department better have already been gone. Yeah, well, not to mention, of course, questions about the uh, suicide bombing attack in Kabul at the airport that killed 13 U.S. service members and injured dozens more. And plus, the follow-up drone strike, which we learned also later killed civilians, including children. So hopefully those questions Both are Both very serious asked. issues. Absolutely. I'd like to play for you some sound uh, for from former President Trump, your former boss. Uh, this is what he had to say over the weekend about his message for the Biden administration. Watch this. They don't believe in America first policies. The world is eating our lunch. They're laughing at us. They watch what happened in Afghanistan and they think we're weak and stupid. And I'll tell you, when I was president, they respected us. And we recently saw the president address the U.N. at the General Assembly here. He said that America is back again and again. He continues to say that. Uh, you know our allies and our adversaries as well, Rick. How do you think they're viewing America under Biden's presidency? Look, I spent eight years at the U.N. Uh, I know multilateral diplomacy. I know how other countries negotiate. And let me be very, very clear on one thing. The idea that you put your country first, whether it's France first, Germany first, or America first, it is only controversial with progressives in the United States. This is not a controversial topic overseas. Everybody overseas knows that countries should put themselves first. We're the only place where this is a debate. Uh, when Germany comes forward or France comes forward, and they decide to push uh, talking points in a diplomatic meeting or in a multilateral setting when we're fighting over statements, they are putting forth ideas that put themselves first. This is basic. So uh, President Trump is exactly right about the opposite of America first is consensus. 
And Joe Biden loves worldwide consensus. He likes everybody to, to you know, kind of chime in and give their, their uh, opinions. The problem is, is that everybody else is putting themselves first and we're listening. Well, the entire policy gets watered down to the lowest common denominator of what we all believe. Mm -hmm. That is not America first. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, if I can add one other point, I think what we have to be able to do as diplomats is articulate why America first is good for our allies. When America is putting itself first, democracy, human rights, the rule of law is put forward by a superpower, everyone around the world benefits. If I could really quick ask you about what's happening in Germany, their election coming in, those votes totaling up, Social Democrat candidate appears to have uh, defeated Angela Merkel's uh, conservative party here. What do you think that means for U.S. relations with Germany going forward? Well, first of all, let's remember that it's a coalition, so they've got to put together a, more than 50 percent. So the socialists did not get 50 percent. They're going to have to find some partners. That could prove difficult. I wouldn't count the Christian Democrats out yet, because if some other parties don't want to join with the socialists, they won't get 50 percent, and they'll have to go looking for different coalitions in, in Germany. One quick point on German elections. They require voter IDs, and they don't use voting machines. Every single vote is hand counted with four sets of eyes. Wow. OK. Interesting fact there about the elections overseas. Former Ambassador Rick Grinnell joining us live on the program. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Emma. Thanks. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.